beautiful look. The campus of Penn State. And a beautiful showdown here. Some nice weather here for the soccer showdown. We're looking at Carolina's starting 11. They usually go with a 3-4-3 setup led by fifth year senior Joanna Boyles. She's coming off an injury. She's really starting to find her stride and rhythm and look for Carolina to set play through her. How about Penn State's starting 11, a 4-5-1 formation. How important is Emily Ogle going to be tonight? She's always crucial to Penn State's ability to keep the ball, but with North Carolina's high press defense, she'll be key to breaking that pressure and starting the Penn State attack. Well, you saw it. We've got clear skies here at University Park and a top six showdown underway. Carolina is going to bring some speed and as you mentioned Jackie they are going to bring some pressure. It's what they're known for. Are right, they're known for that high press defense. They want to catch you deep in your end and just keep you there. They like to make you uncomfortable. The Tar Heels have a four and one record coming into tonight. They lost a double overtime thriller to Central Florida. Penn State is coming off its only loss of the year, three and one overall, to number six at the time, West Virginia. And we open up with a set piece here for Penn State. There is number 10, Emily Ogle, a redshirt junior. Ogle has some pinpoint accuracy. She sends it into the box, the flick on. And Carolina clears it, but it's a corner coming up for Penn State. Penn State's got a ton of options in the box, a ton of height. Watch for Megan Schaefer to get on a lot of those balls that Ogle likes to serve in with that flight underneath them. Megan Schaefer with five points this year, led by Marissa Shiva. She's got eight points to lead the team this year. Service in, back to the far post. And Penn State looking to keep it in. That's Charlotte Williams with the attempt. Charlotte Williams, a junior out of New York, has settled into that midfield spot for Penn State. one of those players that just sits in really good positions between lines, likes to run at back lines with the ball. And she's just tough to defend because she is so smart with her movements off the ball. There's a look at Maddie Elliston, part of that back line for Penn State. So what do fans watch between one of the strengths for Penn State in this defense as a foul is called and that pressure here for North Carolina? It'll be interesting because Penn State likes to send their backs, especially Ellie Jean on that left side. So a Penn State team who likes to get numbers forward, likes to pin you in their end, will have trouble dealing with that person coming in and adding numbers to the Penn State attack. Because UNC, if you notice, has those three in the back. You'll usually see four in the back, especially in a college game. Um, so it's, it's a risk-taking type system, but if they get you pinned, they're on the same, on the same page. It's hard to get out of that pressure. Emily Ogle, who you just saw on the ball. She'll get a lot of the balls from the back line, but you'll have to see Penn State be a little bit more direct here to break those lines, break that pressure. Number 10, she sits in the middle of the field. Erica Dombach calling her the pivot player. Nice move by Laura Frygain. Frygain again with the touch, trying to break down that Carolina D. Frygain trying to go end line. And a nice combination. Here's Shiva. Whitney Lions switching fields. At speed, it's Williams. Out to the flank for Ellie Jean. You will see those outside backs pushing up for Penn State. And the 
pressure coming from Andrew Jeske. A sophomore, number four for Carolina on the right side. So already with the early possessions, offensively, Penn State is doing what? They're getting the ball high up into their attack. They're doing a good job of keeping Emily Ogle in that spot to be able to connect the back line and the forwards in the outside mids. But also, UNC is pulling back their two wide players. You'll see Megan Fox, Emily Fox, and Megan Buckingham. Williams, a through ball, was going for Franny Kraus, and a whistle in the box. It'll be a foul on Penn State. You see here, Fragging gets her head up, finds a little seam in between the back lines, almost gets it, just shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact results in a foul against Penn State. Franny Kraus, now a senior. It's almost like she's played at Penn State for, for seven years. She's one of the more highlighted players that has come out of Pennsylvania from high school. We've heard her name a ton throughout the years doing broadcast. And what Coach Dombach says every year is so consistent. She's just the workhorse on that left side. She covers a ton of ground, and she'll do the work offensively as well as defensively. A lofts one to Megan Schaefer, who chases it down, who's battling with Maya Worth on the black back line from Carolina. Here come the Nittany Lions again, Shiva. Penn State's kind of playing UNC's same, same game. They're pushing their outside backs up. They've got a high press. They've got a high confrontation line. So UNC's kind of been pinned in this first opening minutes here. Charlotte Williams already has a chance. Drops it off to Kraus. Penn State strikes first. UNC's back line just looks like they're a little bit disheveled, getting pulled apart. You see Williams driving that line. Franny Krause just takes an out to in run, finds a little seam, gets it on her foot, and it's just a toe poke into the back of the net. It's a smart run coming from that outside to in, finding the gaps in between that three back of UNC and just a calm finish from Franny Krause. Second goal of the year for the senior. Tied for 14th all time in Penn State history. She's not done yet. She had 80 points coming into tonight. Number 30 is Rose Chandler. She gets the start in goal for Penn State. As we showed you at the beginning, she was one of those players that couldn't play last year, was part of the USU 20 national team. And in her spot last year was Amanda Dennis. Basically as the backup. She played every minute last year. She has not played a second this year. Okay, I, I liked what Coach Dombach said. She's buying into the system. She believes the training methods. You know, she still has confidence in herself. And it's a good, a good competitive training environment between those two without any hard feelings about who's getting the minutes. Carolina is a team that averages 2.8 goals per game. They can have a high-powered offense. Oh, look out, Maya Worth lost her footing. No, Taylor Otto lost her footing. That center back position is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on with North Carolina. Taylor Otto getting the start as a redshirt freshman in the place of Lada Wubin Moy. And she lost her footing here. The ball back from Maya Worth, just on a back pedal, gets caught up in her own feet. Had plenty of time, thank goodness for her, to clean it back up and keep possession. So Taylor Otto is playing in the center back position. She can play a little bit of everywhere. Uh, Anson Dorrance kind of compares her to Crystal Dunn in terms of her versatility. But she's normally a striker. And because of the injury, like I said, to Ubin Moy, she's playing in the back line. She's had some experience there with the U20s. She's very skillful, very calm on the ball. It is a hard position to step into, for sure, with, when you're playing in a three-back system. 
Emily Fox, 11, drops it back. And Carolina, that's really kind of the first time that we've seen them in their own, at in Pence, in their own attacking third tonight. It is, they've really been pinned. Like I said, Penn State's kind of playing UNC's same game plan right now. Out to Megan Schaefer on the left flank. Sends it into the top of the six. Shiva trying to chase it down. We've played about 10 minutes into this match, and possession-wise, goes to Penn State in the first 10. Shiva in a foot race with Sam Leshnack. The keeper for Carolina, she had to come way out to get that one. She did. Penn State's doing a really good job of keeping their front players wide, and it's pulling apart the back three of UNC. And when you see them take those diagonal runs from out to in, it just has huge gaps for them to run into and get the ball on goal. Erica Dombach has said she was excited to go into this matchup tonight, acknowledging that they have two of the best teams in the country. And she has put her team to the test here in 2017 to start. She goes back to back to back with top eight national competition. I liked her mindset with why they went into their non-conference schedule with like, like that because she, she said they're getting presented with these real situations instead of having to make them or create them in training atmospheres. So come push time during season or during tournament or during NCAA tournament, they're ready and prepared. Joanna Boyles, number 10, she's got the ball. And she's the leader for this Carolina offense. Another takeaway for Penn State. Williams looking for some support. Julia Ashley, one of the captains controlling on the back line on the right side. Back to Ashley, who tries to float it to the top of the box. The turn for Russo. Alessia Russo playing up top this year for Carolina, one of the freshmen Anson Dorrance is playing this year. She started all but one match so far this season. And Coach Dorrance talked about having to, to kind of add these different wrinkles and layers into how UNC plays. They're very known for being athletic, playing fast, and adding players like an Alessia Russo makes them a little bit more sophisticated and soccer-minded. Williams, who has the assist, finds a charging Ellie Jean on the left side. There's our first look, really, at Sam Leshnack. Posted solo shutouts, back-to-back -back victories over Auburn and UNC Willi Wilmington. First three games, Carolina gave up five goals and they cleaned things up in the last couple of games coming into tonight. I think that's one of the reasons they were so bummed not to have Ruben Moy in that center back position is because they did feel like they were clicking on all cylinders in terms of their back three. A little bit of pressure coming from Fry Game. And it'll be a Carolina free kick. Look at Sydney Spruill, number two. She's the other freshman that is starting up top for Carolina. One goal already on this season. And when we talk about a high pressing team, kind of that offense is your, defense is your best offense, and she is the person that starts that front line defensively for North Carolina. Anson Dorrance thought that Spruill would be so key in, in providing some pressure. 
against a really good Penn State defense. Ogle settles, and she just kind of has that calming influence to her. She does, and when you are playing against that fast, high press defense, being able to stay composed on the ball is so important to keep possession for your team. Both of Ogle's goals this year come on penalty kicks. Carolina takes it away. Cut back for Boyles. And there's that pressure coming from the Carolina Blue. will reset, they'll switch fields. There's Maya Worth. <laughs> Carolina trying to find its rhythm, Megan Buckingham. <laughs> and the take, the shot up and over the crossbar. A good look by the freshman. This is the first time we've really seen North Carolina string any sort of passes together, find any sort of rhythm. We'll see Russo with the attempt. Early season test, I mean, we're not kidding. Look at that. One, two, three, four teams in the top eight that they'll play here before they even begin conference play next week. And that BYU win really made the country pay attention. And some of these polls, Penn State wasn't even ranked to start in the top 25. Which was shocking to me when I saw that. But they quickly made, like you said, their presence known. And I think the week after, they were four. How much respect does Erica Dombach and this program have? Well, when we spoke to Anson Dorrance, he said, if I was ranking the teams, I might have put Penn State number one they to start. so many pieces to their game, so many different layers that they can throw at you especially like we talked about with the five that are back. They are just so dangerous. Well, Erica Donbach has said, I want us to see all kinds of styles, all kinds of excellence, even before we approach conference play. And this is a team, really, that has embraced that kind of tough schedule as well. They want to be tested. Yeah, but I think when you encounter those things early in the season, you just feel prepared and feeling prepared and having a mindset that you've seen this, you know what's coming, you know how to handle it. It just makes your season that much more fluid and smooth. Penn State again listed as one of the favorites to win the Big Ten again this year. Preseason favorite in 2017. Near a turnover, that was a dangerous look. to Emily Fox. Trying to go at Ellie Jean. A double team coming. Fox looking to take on, and she loses that battle. It was much better by North Carolina defensively. Krause, who has the goal, gets it out to Shiva. Leshnack was there. As opposed to early on in the game, North Carolina's defense was way spread, and in a three-back, you have to stay tight and compact. And on that turnover, as Penn State got into their attack, you saw the three-back of North Carolina get really tight so that they couldn't penetrate with those through balls in between. First time Carolina has made the trip to Jeffrey Field. A 
you can see a good crowd on hand. That student section, Jeffrey Field can be awfully loud. Provided a good home field advantage. Carolina in its attacking half. I think there was a miscommunication there. Looked like Rose Chandler was coming to get it. She's coming. And like you said, when you have an atmosphere that's at a game, sometimes it's hard to hear those little gestures or those little calls by your own teammates. Anson Dorrance has been a pipeline to soccer success. He said this was a great opportunity to measure ourselves against a team who he believes is in the mix for a national title. You talk about compliments, there you go. And like we kind of talked about, UNC is just that powerhouse. When I was little, UNC was, was the huge dream that you had as a girls soccer player. And now Penn State's kind of in that mix. Again, out to Emily Fox, who will drop it back to Ashley. And a one chance, a half chance opportunity for Carolina. That time it was Buckingham, another captain on this Carolina team, another senior out of Novi, Michigan. And Charlotte Williams will take a seat as Selena Williford checks in for Penn State. Williams picking up the assist in her fourth point this year. Carolina is also a team that won't be shy in terms of using its bench. Now remember in college soccer, in the first half, once you sub out, there is no re-entry in the first half. There is one re-entry in the second half. I liked his, his philosophy on subbing. We, uh, you know, we talked to him about the depth of his team, the depth of his roster, and he said he just likes to play the players that he recruits. Um, and I think that, that makes people work hard, that makes teammates work harder for each other, especially knowing that you can bust for 20 minutes and then there's gonna be a sub coming for you for you to get a little rest. Oh, a dangerous pass, it's intercepted, but taken away again by Carolina. Yeah, Anson Dorrance and UNC will go about 19 to 20 players deep. We'll most likely see that again here tonight. And where you'll typically see one or two subs at a time, it's not out of the ordinary to see four people line up for UNC to come in. And you'll almost see a line change. And like I said, it just makes you work that much harder because you know that rest is coming and you have trust in whoever's taking you off. Here's Sproul working with her back to the goal, back to Ashley. And that direct approach hasn't really worked for Carolina yet. As good as Sydney Sproul is at stopping an attack coming from the back line of Penn State, I think they're just having a hard time finding her feet and keeping possession through her right now. Do you feel like they're looking to find her feet or do you feel like they're trying to play to space? Right now, they've been playing in front of her. We haven't seen really any direct balls over the top. Here's where you'll see her work rate in the front line defensively, but she just hasn't been able to keep anything at her feet and get any offense or rhythm going for Penn State. Her or Russo or Andrew Jeske as well. There's the pressure coming from Boyles. Out to Megan Schaefer. The one touch. Schaefer has some speed and some open grass into the box. Schaefer was doing it all herself to Shiva. And again, the one touch. An opportunity for.
for Emily Ogle right at Leshnik. That's where that high press defense is risky because at one end, you've got the ball, and the next, you've got Emily Ogle striking a volley on goal. Three of the four shots here early for Penn State have been on goal. Andrew Jeske, see what she can do with it in the right corner. Here's that double team coming. She creates a throw in. Bridget Andrew Jeske, a sophomore, the only returning All American to this Carolina squad. Carolina squad last year, who Anson Dorrance will be the first to tell you that they overachieved a little bit getting to the College Cup. Ashley will send it in. Andrew Jeske this time. Maya Worth. And the services into the box just aren't generating anything for Carolina. Last three games, how about this? Opponent shots. Penn State already. We're not even to the first half yet, to halftime, and they already have four shots generated. Jeske going to work on Ellie G. Sends it in. Too much. Aaliyah Hyatt in for Carolina. And she will sub out Sydney Spruill. And that is a scripted sub that Anson Dorrance has made consistently here throughout the year. And at least subbing out Sydney Spruill. Aaliyah Hyatt, he felt like she played well against Auburn and has earned a little bit of extra playing time because of that. No shots on goal yet for Carolina. And they've generated a couple here in this first half. Anson Dorrance, how about 21 NCAA national crowns? You pull together every other team, and you still don't amount to that total. It is crazy to see how successful they've been and how long they've been that successful. Nice defensive move by Kaylee Real. It's Jean and Real and Ball and Elliston in the back line for Penn State. Arguably one of the better defenses in the country. Andrew Jeske sends it in. The two tens are battling for it. Boyles and Ogle. Andrew Jeske. The takeaway, here's Fox. What is happening with Carolina's attack and trying to get the ball into the box? We've been 
been great at kind of pinging around. They found Joanna Boyles a ton in that in that spot, and she's been able to spray the ball out wide. We just haven't seen that final pass and anything dangerous come of it quite yet. We haven't seen the cross or that final pass really connect with a Carolina player. Exactly. They're getting the ball in good spaces, but they're not getting in line. They're cutting back, which re resulted in a few turnovers. This is a Carolina offense that averages almost nine shot attempts in the first half this year. And tonight, they're sitting at two. And credit to Penn State also. Their defense has been great in terms of their back line. I think they've lost a little bit of their momentum with the two subs that they brought in in the wide spaces. Just some miscommunications here and there. You've seen Penn State pin. You've seen UNC pin Penn State in in the last five minutes or so. But again, we just haven't seen those final passes. I think if North Carolina can find Joanna Boyle spread out wide and then get end line and get numbers into the box, we'll actually see something come of it. <laughs> Trying to play it out wide. Talia Farah, Frankie Talia Farah, number 19. She is a freshman. She has checked in for Penn State. Erica Dombach compares her to a Megan Schaefer type player. Pressure coming from Schaefer. Direct up top to Hyatt. Hyatt is pressuring. Some good pressure on Rose Chandler, who is forced to just kick it away. Hyatt, a freshman out of California. They'll play it back to Worth's feet. Taylor Otto looking to reset for UNC. They're starting to find a rhythm in their, their back four with the back three, and then Alinsky sitting in front, and they've got the ball wide, and then they've just keep turning the ball over in those wide, deep spaces. Well, it's clear what Aaliyah Hyatt can do, and Aaliyah Hyatt can provide a lot of pressure. She can. Number 17 for Carolina is going to work up top. That's why they sub. It's not easy to play that high press system and be that front runner in the top spot. You kind of initiate that first line of pressure, and it is a lot of work. It's a lot of ground to cover. Okay, so what do you do? You take out your best defender up top in Spruill, and you put on another one who can provide a lot of pressure there in Aaliyah Hyatt. It is worth pushing up. There's some space there on the right side as Julia Ashley chasing it down. Emily Fox, the left-footed service to the head. Maya Worth lost her footing. She could have maybe had a chance. They finally got a cross off in their attack. They got the ball out wide. They spread the Penn State defense and were able to get across into the box and try to get something on the end of it. We have Madison Schultz checking in, and Bridget Andrzejewski will check out. Here's another look. You see that service in the box. Boyles collides. Maya Worth is all the way up in the box on that left side. Again, just missing that finesse to that final pass. Kate Morris is also checked in for Carolina for Boyles, who will get a break here in the 
about the final 11 minutes of this first half. Caria Bello is in for Penn State. And she will take the place of Talia Ferry, the freshman who was just in for a few minutes. Again, the pressure coming here for Hyatt. Results in the takeaway. Buckingham trying to chase it down. With these substitutions, Carolina has changed some of its personnel positions. Kate Morris playing in that holding mid position. She was coming off the bench. And here's Russo. He has dropped back just a little bit. And to the right. I think we've seen so much of this game on this right flank. Not a ton has been out to the left, and I think they just want to see the ball at her feet a little bit more at the end of this half. Interesting to see really in the final 11 minutes. So Carolina going without Joanna Boyles, who was subbed out. I think a lot of that too is just her getting her game fitness back up to speed and not overrunning her. She's coming off of that ACL injury and I think at this point in the season you don't want to get her beaten up or overtired, overworked. Hey, Anson Dorrance had talked about how it's really an 18 month recovery sort of injury. And she not only mentioned she had the ACL, she's had a couple of ACLs in her career. She is and sometimes that 18 month mark is more of a mentality thing too. But when we asked Anson if, if he thought she was back up to full speed, he said she's pretty close. And I think just those small details to her game, the timing, rhythm, all of that is what will come with these games that she's getting under her belt. What? Here's Ogle. Ball sticking to her feet. Marissa Shiva has been locked on that right side. The past 10 or so minutes, UNC had Penn State pinned in there, and we really didn't see Shiva on the ball at all. Time to play it up top to Hyatt. Chasing it down against Kaylee Real. More subs coming in. Brooke Bingham. Morgan Goff. And Cannon Clough have all checked in for Carolina. Seven minutes to play here in this first half. So what can all these subs do for Carolina here in the final few minutes? I think when you're coming on with fresh legs against a Penn State who's closing out this first half, just go at them. They're tired when you're def defending somebody with fresh legs. 
it's tiresome, especially at this point in the first half. And like you said, don't you feel that? Like a little bit of the momentum shifting, even with Penn State, the majority of its starters still playing right now. Exactly. I know if I was an outside back right now, it's just like how many subs are coming off the bench? How many weapons do they have? And your legs are getting more tired and just more fresh legs continue to come at you. Especially when you're down a goal, just trying for that last little push in the last seven minutes. brings it down. Rose Chandler steadying things in goal this year for Penn State. Started all the games this year. And the chase is on. Brooke Bingham. And a goal kick coming up. And one week from today, Big Ten Conference play gets underway for the Nittany Lions when they host the Northwestern Wildcats. That's next Thursday at 7 Eastern right here on BTN and streaming live, of course, on the BTN to go app and that's just exciting to think about in fact i think we have a double header on btn next week at northwestern minnesota penn state don't forget they were tri champions last year in the big 10. Sure, it's a great way to kick off the big 10 season what a tackle it was williford Selena Williford, number 20 for Penn State. You see her here again, such good timing. She gets down on the ground. Right as UNC is about to strike that ball, she comes in clean with her right foot. Oh, mistake on the back line. That's Taylor Otto. Megan Schaefer trying to take advantage. We got a whistle. Schaefer, so strong, so physical. And you see that heart, too, with that play. But almost a costly mistake. Again, that keeping an eye on that center back position for Carolina. Not of a lot of experience back there. Not a lot of experience, and the three back is so hard to play in. There's no support when you're in that center back role. It is you against whatever forwards are coming at you. And like you said, it is a costly mistake if you give the ball away in that position. Well, Tara Otto, as you had mentioned, has played in the center back position for the U20 team. But that was a four back system, not a three back system. So what does she have to adjust to? Just the mentality of you're by yourself. You have to be so good with the ball. You have to be able to constantly be in communication with your two outside backs. And she's doing okay at communicating, but she just has to do a better job at keeping those lines tighter. They're getting spread too far. And especially when they turn the ball over, it's too slow of a transition to tighten up that back line. Schultz, middle of the field here for Carolina. In the final few minutes here of this first half. Carolina yet to get a shot on goal. They keep just missing these little opportunities to get in line and get a ball across. As a defender, it is so hard to defend a ball that's coming from your end line back at an angle towards the PK. Whereas when you're sitting there looking at the ball, it's so much easier to defend and get your body and your shape right to defend the ball that's coming in the box. Okay. 
Julia Ashley lofts one in. Clough chases it down. And Rose Chandler will take her time. She's been known to do this until the opposing team will challenge her. At the end of the first half, you're up a goal. It's just an easy way to cut a little bit of time out to try and ensure that lead going into halftime. Shiva has gotten a couple of these looks in the first half. And she served up a couple of those balls in the first half. She has, and I think that'll be something Penn State looks to change in the second half. We really haven't seen her on the ball too much. And Coach Dombach talked about just how much of a student of the game she is. She's had lots of goals this season so far where it seems like she's just kind of in the right space at the right time. But really, it's a product of her knowing her opponent and being smart with her movements and where she needs to be. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, the one goal scored in this first half, really in the seventh minute of play. Charlotte Williams with the assist and Franny Kraus with the goal. And Penn State leading here at the half, one nothing against North Carolina. Well, his Carolina coaching tree extends throughout the country. Janet Rayfield is one of his former players, now the head coach at Illinois. Marsha McDermott, who you and I both know, who's now the head coach at Army. Anson Dorrance uh, products, not only in the coaching world, but obviously in the playing world and, and all kinds of Carolina products in the NWSL. All-time favorite opponents was Whitney Ingen, and she played that center back in the three um, for them for North Carolina, and she was she was hard to play against. She's one of those players that kind of lured in your nightmares. <laughs> well, Carolina now has a set piece chance here. Only one corner opportunity between both of these teams that came early to Penn State. Teams are set. Joanna Boyles will take it. Floats it to the top of the six. And Penn State trying to smother that opportunity. Russo. Oh, off the hand of Chandler. And Bridget Andrzejewski was there. Really one of the better Carolina looks that we've seen here tonight. Ball got flighted in, and I think Chandler just kind of read it wrong a little bit of a misstep. You see Alessia Russo on the ball, gets it on her right foot, and puts a ball with some backspin on it. And I think it just takes a weird spin into Chandler's hands. Penn State has been known to lock it down in the second half. We've only given up two second half goals all season long. There's the one touch and it's right at Chandler. But a good look again from Russo. Penn State coming out on the front foot in the first three minutes or so. They talked about how they needed to get more shots on goal and and we've seen that so far. North Carolina really has started this second half, kind of the way Penn State began the first half. They have. And you see Carolina has gotten its first shot on goal in the first few minutes of this second half. Be what an Anson Dorrance talking to can do at halftime. I'm sure he is pretty good at halftime. Motivational speeches at this point is in, in his career. Oh, 
Marissa Shiva coming back to receive. And again, there's Ovo in the middle of the field for Penn State. Again, the pivot person and the settler for this offense. to come out. That's also something we didn't see in the last 20 minutes or so of that first half is Ellie Jean got herself pinned. We didn't see her attack that left flank, which is where Penn State likes to generate their offense and set play a lot of the time. Jean and Elliston are your outside backs for Penn State. Erica Dombach has given them the green light to push up. Alessia Russo trying to feed the right flank as Franny Krause intercepts. Here's Russo. Trying to get it up to Sydney Spruill. North Carolina, North Carolina looks so much more together on their press. You see Alessia Russo kind of cheat and come back a little bit, almost as, as a fifth midfielder. And Spruill went down. The Carolina bench wanted a call, didn't get it. They were going up top to the freshman. Talia Ferry, Frankie Talia Ferry getting the start here to begin this second half for Penn State. We saw her come in on that left side in the first half. She wasn't in for long. She had to play a ton of defense in that short amount of time that she was in. You see her come in on the right side this time. Offside call. Here we go, Bob. The first on Penn State tonight. the injury to Lada Wubin Moy on the back line to Carolina. This is not a Carolina team that is 100%. An injury to Rue Muchera, who works their, their depth in the flank position on the midfield. She is done for the year, only played in the Duke game. They hope to get Jesse Scarpa back, maybe before the ACC tournament. Nice run for Shiva. Happy, that's great hustle. A touch pass, the turn, oh, an offside call. Shar Williams was wide open, but maybe there was a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> UNC does a great job at holding their line, and you see Shar Williams go on beyond that line after the ball is played. Talia Ferry up where Megan Schaefer usually is, is on that top line. Here's Carolina, again, looking like a different Tar Heel team here to start this second half. Hey, 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 hey. 
Russo. We've seen her play on the left side. We've seen her play on the right side, as you mentioned, towards the tail end of the first half. A combination look. Buckingham sending it in. Andrew Jeske could settle that down, and we could have a tie game. Well, if you heard this crowd getting a little rambunctious, it's because we got a rabbit on the field. <laughs> Nothing more exciting than a rabbit on the field in a soccer game. I don't know if the rabbit has any eligibility left or not, but, <laughs> but that was showing high pressure speed. High pressure, a little hop in the step. Russo. Drops it off to Boyles. And it's Elliston coming over for the hard tackle. That's still in play. Just threaded the sideline. Here's Taylor Otto. Yes, Frankie! Yes, Shiva! Yes, Shiva! They have found the feet of Russo a lot here to start this second half. Tar Heels with the takeaway. Emily Fox with the shot. They have. They found Russo in. She just brings this, this level of sophistication to the attack. She's so smart in her movements on and off the ball. She's clever. She's got a little bit of size to her. And like we talked about in that front line that we were that North Carolina was missing was being able to keep the ball with her back to goal, and she's very good at that. And I think she's allowed UNC to get some more numbers into their attack by keeping that ball. Well, a couple of shot attempts here in the first 10 minutes, one of them on frame for Carolina. Still trailing by a goal. The only score happening in the seventh minute of play. Franny Krause with her second goal of the year. With this push here to start this first half, you can see we're all even in terms of shot attempts between these two teams. Krause trying to send it long. Looking to go over the top to Shiva. Okay, Marissa Shiva, just one shot on goal tonight. She leads Penn State with eight points this year. All of them coming with her four goals. We've seen Russo on the ball a little bit more because as of right now, at least, Russo and Buckingham have switched positions. So you see Russo a little bit deeper and they're switching back. But Russo is stuck in that outside mid spot, and we saw her on the ball a ton more in those last five minutes. Hyatt will be back in, Aaliyah Hyatt. We saw what kind of pressure she could provide in the first half. And she will take the spot of Sydney Spruill. Now remember that Spruill can re enter one time. Schultz is also in for Carolina. And she takes the place of Andrew Jeske. And a hard tumble to the turf for Russo. 
A hard tumble, but a smart foul here by Ogle. There's tons of space between Ogle and her back line, and if she gets past Ogle in that space, it is just open, open field. Fancy footwork from Emily Fox. And heads up to the linesman. And Megan Schaefer will come in now for Penn State. Talia Ferry will exit. What do you make of that substitution to start the second half for Penn State? I think it gave Megan Schaefer a little bit more rest time going in to the second half. But they definitely lost her ability to hold the ball up top and be a target forward. I think Talia Ferry got caught coming a little bit deeper and didn't stretch the North Carolina formation quite as much. Megan Schaefer coming into tonight 20th all time in points in Penn State history. Right behind her teammate Franny Kraus. Thank you, Tyler Ferry, a part of the highly touted freshman class for Penn State. That Erica Dombach is slowly but surely kind of integrating into some playing time. Carrie Abello is really the other freshman who's gotten some playing time. A, a four-person freshman class. Yeah, she looked. Good job. to the middle of the field. Fragane with some space to work with. And they turn Kraus. Here's Marissa Shiva and another offside. So the third offside call for Penn State this half. You see Megan, Sh Megan Schaefer is coming back on the field and she Stakes are claiming that top forward kind of setting the press for Penn State defense. Again, Penn State trying to push Carolina to the sideline. Trying to push them, but when that first person goes, the rest of the team kind of has to shift with her. Buckingham stays with it. She's into the 18. The ball was loose. Aliyah Hyatt was there for Carolina. You see here, a good tackle by Ball. Just misses it. North Carolina gets end line, and it's just a little bit of a scramble in the box. And then a lucky little toe poke by Elizabeth Ball to get that ball out of danger. Buckingham, third for Carolina in terms of points in 2016. She had 14 of them last year. Anson Dorrance says he could, she could possibly, when she's playing her best soccer, be one of our better field players. She's such a hard worker on that left flank. She works offensively, defensively, covers a ton of ground for them. He said last year she was one of their best field players for North Carolina. And we got another free kick for the Tar Heels. Mentioned the start of conference play coming up next week for Penn State. One more look at the foul. See Shiva on the ball. Boyles comes in hard. Boyles with the service. 
It's Morgan Goff, number 14, applying the pressure. Penn State will get the throw in. After this match, it'll be conference play beginning for Carolina. And they have a stretch where they go to Florida State. The next game up. Florida State, of course, the favorite again to win the ACC. Here's Shiva controlling to Ogle. One touch possession passing for Penn State, resulting in Shiva running on on the right side. Yes. Those little types of combinations is what makes Penn State so good, and we really haven't seen that in the last almost 40 minutes or so. There is. It's been so long that we've seen that combination play that there's no numbers forward. It was Marissa Shiva by herself, and I think if they can get their numbers forward, we'll be able to see those tiny little movements. I mean, you're talking about three or four players who are involved with that combination. Yeah, around the ball, you kind of want to see a triangle or a diamond, so you always have angles and different passing channels. And Penn State's just been on the back foot. They've been defending a ton, and they haven't been able to get any sort of rhythm or time to get players around the ball. After the first 20 minutes of this match, should Penn State be concerned about its offensive attack, the way it ended the first half and the way it started the second half? I think they are both kind of similar. I think the, the best that we've seen Penn State is the first 20 minutes. And I think the, the last 20 minutes of the first half and the first 20 minutes so far, they've just played a ton of defense. Fans don't like that foul call. The midway point now in this second half. Again, the only goal of the game coming in the seventh minute of play. Morris is in for Russo, and Cannon Clough is back in for Carolina. Elizabeth Ball, number seven. If Emily Ogle is the settler in the midfield, Elizabeth Ball has to be the settler in the back line for Penn State. And I think she earned that title last year when Kaylee Real was out. I think Elizabeth Ball used to just be that physical presence in the back line, but I think with Kaylee Real out, she had to be a better communicator. She had to organize the line, and I think now those two are so strong in the center back position. Perhaps a chance here for Carolina. Fox couldn't turn it. Both of these teams coming into tonight with just one loss on the year. Both of these teams ranked in the top six in the country. And tonight is the first time that Carolina has come to play Penn State at Jeffrey Field. Out to Kraus. 
Franny Krause, the lone gold scorer tonight. Dropping it off to Ellie Jean. That's where Penn State is going to get their chances by sending Ellie Jean, by finding wind on the field, especially with that Carolina back three. You have to pull them apart to try and attack those seams that you create by doing so. And we just haven't seen Penn State do that yet this half. Our State Farm State of Success. How about Franny Kraus? Now a senior. She scored her 35th career goal tonight, second of the year, but she's seeking to become the first Nittany Lion to get 10 or more goals in four straight seasons since 2005. You say 2005, and you're like, that's not that long ago. And it's then you long do the ago. Math. That's, that's an impressive When you have stat. a player who played from 2002 exactly. to 2005, when did you play again? <laughs> I played 06 to 2010. So you're still young. I'll take that. Carolina was trying to get it to Sydney Sproul. They have not had success in trying to do that tonight. We've seen Penn State have some success with some combination looks. We have yet to see that from Carolina tonight. We haven't. And they've had Penn State pin. They've had different opportunities. But we haven't seen that 1v1 attacking mindset that Anson mentioned at the beginning of the half. They have the ability, especially in these wide flanks. We just haven't seen them get at somebody and get end line. And in terms of Penn State, we haven't seen Emily Ogle on the ball in a while. I think they're just so pinned in their end that they haven't had a chance to get numbers around the ball and really possess and get numbers forward. So Anson Dorrance told us if he feels like they're getting beat in the midfield, he's going to change up a formation. North Carolina is known for the 3-4-3, but he might go a 4-3-3. Do you expect to see that here with about 20 minutes to go? I don't know. Not when you're down a goal. I think if you are tied or if you're, you're winning a game and you're down in the midfield, then you might change it because that gives you more defensive shape within the midfield. But I think when you are going after a goal, you're keeping those numbers forward. You're trying to get after the back lines. I don't think you're as concerned with evening out your midfield at this point in the game. What about providing defensive shape, though, with, when he adjusts with outside backs who can push up? He will, but I think when you take the, like an Emily Fox is who would move into the back line, and I think if you take her back, you're just losing what she brings to the game attacking-wise. Kate Morris dropping it back to Royal. Alinsky, who's in for Carolina. Again, this Tar Heel team goes about 18, 19, sometimes 20 players deep in a match. See a lot of substitutes in right now for Carolina. An open opportunity chasing it down is Eckert. Kaylee Eckerd with a decent opportunity for Penn State. You see a great ball by Ogle into that space on the left. Eckerd gets on the ball. She takes a great first touch, but she cuts herself in instead of getting end line. When you've got those longer balls that free you up, and UNC did a great job at closing in that space defensively, you've got to allow your team to get numbers forward. And I think if instead of cutting that ball, if she gets end line, she gets more numbers forward and can cut a ball back and find just, somebody. And just under the 20 minute mark, that was Penn State's first shot of the second half. We just haven't been able to get numbers in the box and create any good chances. Well, four of their five shots, as you can see, though, tonight have been on frame. And up 
opportunity for Penn State, Ortega Hurado, miss hit. You see a misstep by Otto and a great touch in. She slows down and hesitates just a second and North Carolina is able to get back and slide and keep that ball out of the goal. An excellent recovery from Taylor Otto. Both of these coaches, though, going to their bench in this second half, trying to get some fresh legs here for the final few minutes of this match. <laughs> Williford turning. Getting it out again to Marissa Shiva. Overlapping run by Elliston. And she drops it off to her. Hard tackle by Ball. And Carolina will keep it. it. Sounded like a very clean tackle on the ball. So the striker proving that she can play a little D tonight. She's covering some ground as well. Had a hat trick earlier this year against South Florida. As we had mentioned though, she has played in the back for the U-20 national team. And has been called by her team to play back there tonight in the center back position. Lada Wubin Moy out with the injury. Went out in the first half against UNC Wilmington. Anson Doran's expecting to have her back at some point this year. Switching fields. Here's Haley Eckert. Even just that little switch of the attack, playing it through midfield, staying more composed on the ball allows Penn State to get their numbers forward. Up coming down to the final 13 minutes of play. Oh, a hard collision. Clough and ball. Russo again to no one. And the Carolina pressure, Andrew Jeske trying to apply it, it doesn't seem as dynamic as it did to start this half. The game slowed down a little bit. It's the end of the game. Legs are maybe a little bit more fatigued at this point, and that excitement of the start of the game is gone. So I think it's just a more composed, high-pressure system. Up and over the top as Megan Schaefer chases on. A 1v1 opportunity. Otto again shutting the door. Go, 
How would you evaluate what Taylor Otto has been able to do tonight? I think she's been good. I think she's had, quote unquote, some rookie mistakes coming into that center back in the three back of North Carolina. More so just the ball at her feet and decision making with her passes. But defensively, I think, I think she's done well, all things considered. Especially in the second half, she's been able to close space a little bit faster, been more confident with the steps and position that she's taking. So adjustments you expect to see here by Anson Dorrance here in the final 11 minutes of play. I think you'll see full press defensively. I think you'll see numbers flying forward. You'll see their midfielders start to squeeze and push up a little bit higher, especially in those outside spaces. I think they'll try to make it even more uncomfortable for Penn State coming out of the back. you'll see that midfield pressure stay really tight when they don't have the ball. And as soon as they have the ball, you'll see this width on the left side. Buckingham in the left mid spot trying to provide that for Carolina. Here she is with the ball at her feet. A direct pass was going for Andrew Jeske. Rose Chandler with one save tonight. The only shot on goal from Carolina this evening. And three subs coming in for Penn State. Penn State Frygain is back. Kind of bringing their horses back on the field with Kraus and Frygain. And I really like Fragging. We haven't really talked about her a lot today, but she's such an unassuming player and she's just so smart with what she does with the ball off offensively. She had six shot attempts in the last game against West Virginia. Schaefer looking to try to turn the corner and again, Otto. Megan Schaefer is not an easy person to bump off the ball. So credit to Otto, took a great angle, used her body, got in between her and the ball and was able to keep possession out of the back as well. Is that taught or is that learned? A little bit of both, a little bit of both. I think it's, it's taught and then it's really learned if you don't do it and, a, and the ball ends up in the back of the net. <laughs> it's really learned if you want to keep playing back there. <laughs> exactly. Penn State looking to build to its lead. A goal that was scored in the seventh minute of play. We haven't seen anything since. We've seen some opportunities between these two. One more look at that goal coming all the way at the beginning of this match. First, it was Shar Williams who found Franny Krause. Such a smart run by Franny Krause. Just creeps in from outside, in between the center backs, right in on goal, and toe pokes it with her right foot. She had 12 goals last year. The Penn State best 27 points in 2016. Out of Greensburg Catholic. Again, one of the more Highlighted players coming out of the high school area for Penn State. Marissa Shiva leads Penn State in points this year. She has not been able to get going tonight. Still with one shot attempt in this match. This game is really starting to open up in the last eight minutes or so. See so much space between the lines, playing a little bit more direct between both teams, which kind of results in this track meet type field right now. Schaefer goes down hard, but Penn State wins it. Shiva to the center of the field, has some choices, drops it in, and the save from Leshnack. 
so smart with her wrong run. Laura Fragging, she keeps herself on side. Marissa Shiva has all the time in the world, hesitates a bit. Fragging stays on side, takes a good first touch, just doesn't get on enough pace on her shot. The first shot of the night by Laura Fragging. Six shots on goal tonight for Penn State. A six to one advantage in this match. Here's Boyles with a chance. Earned the ACC Offensive Player of the Week nomination after a couple of goals and a win against Auburn. Really good attacking player but everyone has been shut down on the Carolina side tonight. Playing it up and over the top. Morgan Goff was trying to chase it down. Goff is a backup midfielder. Also would be the backup goaltender if Carolina had to go that route. Still in play for Frygame. She's going to eat up some time in the corner. Kind of creeps up on Maya Worth in that deep position. Is able to deep position, hold it a little bit in the corner to try and shave off some time. Was hoping for a corner kick, I think, but three people came around the ball and ends up just knocking it out. Well, the clock has stopped because under five minutes of play, when the leading team is subbing, as Penn State is doing, the clock will stop with under five minutes. I like that rule. When you're a team in the lead, sometimes subbing can kind of be used as, as a time shaver, and that ensures that that doesn't happen. The game stops. Can't waste any time with a sub. Here's Kraus chasing on. Every big defensive play has been made in the second half by Taylor Otto. Russo will fire. She can hit that. Oh, a one-handed save by Chandler. Great save. By Chandler, that play starts with Boyles. She sent just a perfect one-touch ball out, and then just a great shot. That's in the range. Alessia Russo, the freshman out of England, can drop that down. She's got the leg to get it to go. She has got some power on her right leg. Scored a great goal against Auburn. Carolina's first corner chance and a whistle on the service. And the attempt she took was almost in the exact same spot. Didn't get quite as much zip on it as she did on that goal against Auburn, but it was close. Carolina just reloads and reloads with talent. Trailing by a goal here tonight. 
the eighth meeting between these two teams, and Penn State has only knocked off Carolina once coming into this matchup. Two-minute warning at University Park. Corner coming up. The second for the Tar Heels. Carolina looking to tie it up. Boyles with the service. Maya Worth playing it back in. And an important clearance for Penn State. Here's Russo. Alessia Russo. And Shiva was there. State doing a good, it's, it's chaotic. You have that feel of UNC just kind of knocking on the door and they're doing a good job of weathering the storm so far. Carolina's got to let it fly. Boyles does. And Penn State will take its time. Final seconds of the match. And in a top six matchup, Penn State coming up on top. The foot of Franny Krause, the difference tonight. I don't know that Penn State will be thrilled about how they played, but that being said, they got the points coming out of this game. It's a big win. North Carolina is such a tough opponent, but there's tons of takeaways from this game, and I think that's why Coach Dombach set it up this way, to be able to take that and prepare for the rest of their season. Give me one takeaway for Penn State. I think they have to be able to deal with that pressure better. I think in the second half, they lost Ogle, they lost their midfield, they weren't able to get numbers forward, and they did a lot of defending. So I think just staying a little bit calmer, keeping to what makes them good, even under that relentless, high-pressure system. And what's the take? away for Carolina. Carolina, I think just generating more final passes in their offense. They had Penn State pinned. I think they need to trust in their players that play out wide. They've got good 1v1 attackers, and they just didn't get end line. They weren't getting numbers forward or runs into the box. Carolina generating four shot attempts. Two of the four coming on frame in the second half, as well as a couple of corner opportunities in the final few minutes. But falling short tonight to Penn State, losing one-nothing. Right, 